this way, you can only do this way. And they make up that they scoop the pass on. I'm not doing They look dorky. <coughs> Oh, yes, our parents when we're wrapping twine around the world. The largest know. ball of twine would They're be like, very Dr. important. Dr. Seuss hats. I'm not wearing that. What else would you wear? I don't know. <laughs> oh, my you gosh. See it we, I have seen it. I yeah. made a special trip. <laughs> I yes. took my Did kids. Did you ever see that? We, well, we were going to the lake or something. Yeah, we made a detour through town, and I got the kids... It was early in the morning, and I said, get up, get up, everybody's got to get up. I said, why? She's in the world's largest ball of twine. What are you talking See, about, Dad? They have to Dad? keep twine a because one in Minnesota, they say, is bigger. There's one in Minnesota, too, they say it's actually bigger. But we don't want them to get hit, so they keep wrapping twine. And so we just make an annual bit where we add another string yeah, around well, it? well, at the Copper City Picnic, and all this so do they use new twine or do they use, you it know, looks new to me. they should use recycled they should. twine. Yeah, that's what it's like. <laughs> well, I know we had somebody some famous in our room. It's cool. Kind of a famous place. It's falling down. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, this is my <clears throat> Budget for 2012, and as requested, it is reduced by 2%, which is about $4,000 on loan. Um, do you have any questions on anything? I went way down on office supplies because they might as well use up what's in the closet first thing. Yeah, before it turned yellow. Yeah, and then uh, went down on medical supplies. For some reason, we've been really slow on seeing people, so maybe that'll continue. Other than that, pretty much everything stayed. But I did want to point out on the salaries, I had budgeted like a hundred and twenty some thousand. And actually, it shows up like that because at the end of the grant year on bioterrorism, I transfer over what's left for salaries and it offsets. So that's why that's way down. That's not okay. actually Fair. the actual. Yeah, and it offsets salaries, I guess, so that's where it shows up. So the building's in pretty good shape now? Well, Whoa. yes and no. <laughs> the front door has some issues. Um, if you don't, when you leave, if you don't, Pull the doorknob at least twice, it doesn't match. So there's been a few times the place has been open. So you have to be really careful when you check the door. So I don't know. For is it the lock or is it the door itself? I think it's Is it sagging? I don't know. I haven't had it looked at. But it's just started. And then older people have trouble getting in because it's so heavy. So I thought maybe I would look at um, a replacement. Other than that, I don't think we have any issues. Try a little WD on there. It might work. It really might. It helps for a while. Mm -hmm. That door was came to the building, so that was like... Well, it's so a lot of times, isn't it? Too. I mean, it might be the lock, and if the lock needs to be replaced, and I think about using a lever lock rather than a knob. Then it'd be easier for you. Yeah. yeah. Push holes, push bars. Well, yeah, that's well, just the lever. Well, if I get the lever bars, I'd have to get all of them done. I think, maybe, probably. Somebody said, if I'm going to do that, I might as well get a handicap door, too. I was going to check with Adams Brown Barrel and see if I had equipment fund that I have. Especially if it's handicapped, I would it's say. It's going to cost some money. Well, yeah, yeah. it's going to cost some money. <coughs> Put the big handicap in front of it and they just triple it. Is it or more. Is your reserve fund, is it a... It says for equipment. Mm -hmm. It says. Yeah. But now I asked me how much time should I just ask them what you can use it for? But I would think that would help qualify if it's a handicap. 
Makes sense to me. Okay. Okay. That's it. That's it. All right, then. We'll put it in the stack. Okay. Thank you. If you need some extra coin, let me know. I <laughs> okay. I said I'm not going to line up to the point. I'd like to call for executive session non elected personnel. Oh. 10 minutes. I move we go into executive session for non elected personnel for 10 minutes. I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 We're in executive session for 10 minutes. To you. Aye. Hello. John Ezrick, our court administrator, and Sabrina Chisholm is our uh, chief court service officer, and Renee is our court district court. New court district court. Yeah. It's the first time she gets it's, to do this. It's the first time I get to do this. New clerk. New clerk. Uh, okay, we're on. Page. Three, two, at the bottom, at the page two, shows that you know our proposed budget for this upcoming year is sixty-two thousand. Last year we had, it, it was sixty-two thousand. Uh, we estimate at this time that out of that sixty-two thousand, that we believe we're going to spend around fifty thousand eight hundred dollars this year. You know, based upon the first five five months of what we've had. Last year, we actually only spent thirty-four thousand of the sixty-two thousand that we had requested. We had considered this year reducing it. A uh, couple reasons we didn't didn't want to put Renee in a in a crunch in case there was any updates in the computers or something. Uh, since this is her first year, uh, I, you know, Mary Gatton came up, went up, and took a job at Barton County District Court. And we had a long time court retire up there. The other thing is, you know, last year there weren't a lot of criminal cases. I know Mr. Sheepack has three or four pending fairly substantial cases that are, that are ongoing. Although I will tell you last week we had a plea to a case that was scheduled for about a five-day jury trial that was later in the fall that is not going to happen, which is something we can't control. But uh, I know that it was a a plea was to a level one crime, so you know that would have been a long time trial. It would have increased, you know, five or six thousand dollars of expense had we had we had that trial. You know, we believe that you know, we don't arbitrarily, since we had sixty-two thousand, we don't just spend it. As you can see from two thousand ten, we only spent the thirty-four thousand. Basically, that money then just reverts back into the county general fund. And so we don't, because we ask for it, if we don't need it, we don't spend it if we don't have to. Uh, and we, we have tried because of those tough years. John Eastern is our court administrator. He does a great job of checking with the clerks, finding out what we need. Uh, if there's anything we need to update, we try to do it on a every other year basis so we don't have a big expenditure all at once. John, you want to kind of just explain a little bit about the district expense? Uh, I don't know if Mr. Fancher is aware of what that would be. You'll notice on page three, there's a little asterisk something down about this far on page three. Uh, it says district expense. That's a shared expense that the for the judges, court services, and myself. That there are often expenses that are spread out around the five counties of our district because uh, they're not attributable attributable to any county. Telephone calls, telephone the judges, center, center. travel expense. Uh, those Correct. Type of things. Correct. And uh, so what we do is we put that in a district expense fund. The district expense fund, if you want to know what, what part you're, you're paying pursuant to your county population. So we've been plugged in the new 2010 census numbers. Actually, yours didn't change. Uh, it didn't change enough to click over another percent. It was like three or four tenths of a point. We rounded up or down whichever way it went this year. And if you're interested in how that county population works, uh, page seven has a district expense budget. It's always it's 109,000, <clears> and uh, you'll see Martin County actually Martin County gained a percentage, a little percent, but but Stafford stayed the same as eight, the same as last year. 
that's where we get that $88,720. Oh, okay. So it's actually a county, it's a budget within a budget. In other words, district expense has its own budget. Uh, what happens is Barton County fronts all the money. For instance, we, uh, we vouch it through Barton County, they pay it, and then they, they bill, your clerk gets a bill for whatever monthly charge that came out of that, came out of that fund. And you just reimburse Barton County. Like, like the postage, you know, when I send a letter down here to Renee, or she sends it, you know, do we, since I sent it from Martin, do we Put down pay 44, 44 cents from Barton, or since it's coming to Stafford, do we give them 44 cents? Like I said, we, we add, total the total, total of all that postage, and, and then you pay 8% of whatever the total amount of our postage is. So, yeah. so that's, that's a justification of logic for yeah. your expense here, which we've been doing, I think, 1980 probably was the first time we did an expense, and they've done it for 30 some years. So it's a fair way to do it, though. It, it seems <coughs> pretty fair, it's pretty reasonable. Uh, Renee, anything you're thinking about, or any? Not at this time, no. Would you fish your takeover? Right after no. Thanksgiving. Really? It was right after Thanksgiving. Yes, November 28th, 28th? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Sabrina, she she handles our probation, court services. Uh, you might just you know how often we have people come down and those types of things. Kurt Kennedy comes down two to three times a month. As far as are you familiar with court services of what we do? I didn't since you're new. We do the traditional probation. I know Amy Boxberger comes down and talks about intensive probation. Mm -hmm. We supervise juvenile misdemeanor and felony probations that do all the pre-sentence investigations for the court. So we have a little bit, probably a higher caseload than community corrections because it's not as intense. And then like on our felonies, if there's continued violations with them, sometimes then they bump up to that program if they can't be in compliance with the court services. Anyway, that's what we're requesting to leave it as it has been uh, for the last, actually, I think it's actually the last two years we requested that and haven't increased it. Uh, we do pay attention to it and won't spend any more than what we have to. We hope we don't have to spend too much. <laughs> but, uh, anybody has any questions on anything? No, really. Look it over. Right. You know, do what you can do, and we will just appreciate it, and we'll work with what we what we can get. So I do have a question. Sure. And this average un, un nine, average month caseload, that's individuals? That's like uh, uh, transfer to other caseload is an individual? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's the court oh. services caseload on the bottom. As far as that total under supervision, that 460 is the number that we have as an office. In addition, then there's 17 bond supervisions that we're actively supervising. Then this transfer to another county is like any, if they like lived in Hutchison, they would mm -hmm. provide courtesy supervision for us. So that, that number is for the... The district, the district, not, not, not Stafford County, County, right? Yeah. We don't have 400 people in Stafford County. That's where he was going County. with that. <laughs> right. No, Stafford County doesn't have all the time. He's busy place with it. <laughs> so we, I'd have to send Kurt more often. <laughs> <laughs> well, realistic, then we could go by and take that number and take 12%. Right. 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 Yeah, probably roughly. Okay. You know, okay. I, I would imagine it stays about the same. Because that, that many of the highway would be hot. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but the, filing, the filings up here on the upper half of the page are staff or Yes. Yes. Which, as you can see, traffic, you know, traffic tickets are 189, which is about, about right. You know, everybody always has way more traffic than anything else. Civil filings, limited civil, that's. A lot of collections, people trying to collect on bad debts. Those are usually your top two. Probate, you know, you have people who pass away or have different uh, distribution cases. 
So your criminal cases, you had 78 last in 2010. Uh, in juvenile case, you had about 17. You know that that is, you know, not, I would assume about about the same. About it kind of fluctuates. I don't know what it's going to be this year. Right. Right. Okay. Look at the trend that's been going down every year on the, on the, from 2006 to 2010, the total number. Yes. Um, that's quite a bit. And I'm, I'm just looking there at traffic cases. Actually, your traffic have gone down quite a bit. Now, part of the reason, I mean, you know, you were 270, you know, 6, 260, 250. Maybe that's because, I don't know why, maybe the troopers don't get out this far, you know, there's been some budget restraints yeah, and sometimes they don't, aren't able to get out quite as much. All right. All right, thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. We have a, oh, been, been a little bit of wheat cut out here, south and north of town. Nothing. I saw a bunch of machines going. Are you guys cutting yet or doing anything? Mine's done. 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 Last week. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, half a fourth of mine had a couple of weeks ago. Wouldn't buy the got the weather coming. Well, that's too bad. All right, guys. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Hi. How are you today? Great. Thank you. 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 Okay, so, so that's kind of an angle. Let's get that on the
um, funds that we receive from the burn truck would be used towards that. So mm -hmm. I just want to kind of give you a head, heads up that we're finally moving forward on that and uh, some bills will be coming through on that. Uh, the generator that I'd asked you for, that, that grant, finally I got uh, word back from them folks and that actually, um, they were looking at more bigger projects, so we can't... Uh, we didn't qualify? We didn't qualify. They wanted to spend more. Really? <laughs> <laughs> they were looking at more expansive. If we'd have probably put the whole thing under there, we might have been, but we have been waiting around for a year to hear back. And, so, I mean, the, the full remodel and everything might have fit under that umbrella, but just a generator didn't. They want you to, they want bigger projects. So, you More think in this day and age they'd be looking for lower projects, but <coughs> not so. Uh, <coughs> I just want to visit a little bit about the, the parking in front of the annex. What, uh, just to give you kind of my perspective, is probably in the front, not really designed too well for now that they've changed that to where you can't pull in closer to the uh, the annex. We, we probably should uh, restrict the parking in the front other than just unloading. Um, then the other, we probably should have a small area on the, even on the, and, and I'm just talking a small area, uh, on the east side because that's where our sprinkler hookup is. So you wouldn't want to have to, if cars park too close, you're going to be trying to run a line in up to the sprinkler to hook up. So if we just gave us you know, kind of like a little fire hydrant, little one stall thing that we can at least, when you pull up there, if you need to use that sprinkler system, that you can at least get you a line up to the building. That's on the east side? Yes. But just uh, well, On the north side, side I, probably would, I probably wouldn't have them parking directly in front of the building. That's where your people's going to be going in and out, even getting an ambulance in there to get somebody out if you had issues with that. You say just maybe where they really got that one handicap accessible place to have that blue in there in that area where the people could load and unload. How would you designate just a loading and unloading? You need some type of signage or is there something on you pay it on the on the uh, do you pay it on on the on the asphalt itself or something? Probably some type of uh, you could probably do both. You could probably uh, designate it maybe uh, I don't know, even know that I'd try I mean blue they might think that you could just park there. Be the only problem. There's a sign out by the Catholic Church. Go look at there. Okay. It says something about unloading, unloading only or something. <clears throat> I'm sure the city puts that up. They have that by the school too. Do so that? in the front then it needs to be a fire lane? Well I I'd probably I mean there, there really isn't a whole lot of area there to park anyhow, you know, it's, you know, when you get the two handicapped areas going up and then there's only just right there in the front. I probably just wouldn't let anybody park right there. I'd probably just have it be strictly unloading and loading. Um, well, they did park, park, they restrict people going in and down the building to have something there anyhow. Just be, and like I say, if you did have an emergency, it would. Right, right. that's gonna, where you're going to pull your ambulance, right up there. Who are you going to get with Mel, too? I can do that. I'll get with Mel. Just wanted to make sure it was okay with you guys that, right. that we do that. That's pretty much what we decided. Yeah. I mean, the, the three of us. Had that same thought all along. Yeah, I, I mean, it is. You're not going to be able to get very many cars in no, here. You know, so it'll just be cluttered. It's not going to break too many people's hearts because I doubt that you can get much more than two cars but, there. But it is nice to be able to load and unload there. And yes, and there's no problem with that. that. Yeah. yeah, you're just you're going to be there temporarily, and you're not. You know, you're probably in the, you're going to be close by to your vehicle, so we need to move you. You'd move pretty quick. Yeah, but I wasn't aware of the one on the east side. Yeah, you know the only. <coughs> We just need to make sure that they, they didn't restrict us from, I doubt whether they'd even park that close to each other because you wouldn't be able to get out if you parked, if you pinned each other in that tightly. So I don't know that, maybe we wouldn't even need to restrict parking there. We just need to be able to get a line up to the sprinkler system. If you'd have to hook up to it, uh, you know, that sprinkler system will go off, but let you supplement it with, with a fire line if, right. if you truly have a fire going. That's we have a hydrant right there on the corner, right? right. So when if you did that, would you use the hydrant? You grab the you grab yeah you no you grab the hydrant, you grab the hydrant, uh, and then you you uh, drop your line behind your truck, hook up your hydrant, and you'd probably just go ahead and start pumping to your sprinkler head, hook in, and then um, be hooking up the hydrant line uh, to jump right in because you're gonna you're gonna dump all your water off in your tank, 
uh, hopefully, you, most of the time, the, the reality is most of the time, uh, one sprinkler header you just put it out, whatever the fire is. So it, it's, it's kind of them, but, uh, but you'll park your truck there by the hydrant, I assume. Well, I don't know if, if you have a large fire. Not, not usually. Assume. What you usually do is you, what you usually do, if this was a fire hydrant, you, you come in with your truck, you pull the line off the back, make a uh, make a loop around that hydrant so the so the line that you know would would stay there that end. Then you drive up to where you want to position your truck. Then you uncouple the hose, hook it in the back. Have somebody here that's hooking up the hydrant at the same time. Charge the hydrant when the driver's ready, and then your truck's got water supplied to it from the hydrant. In the meantime, you're hooking up a line from this truck over to the sprinkler that hook up on the building, which is on the east side. Yes. And so you want the spot on the east side. Well, let's just keep an eye on, on what's happening over on that side as far as parking. And uh, as long as we can get a firefighter that could make his way through. But I, I can't see people parking so close to each other that we couldn't get can't a firefighter get through there. Can't get yeah. hose between the cars. Yeah, I wouldn't think they'd park that close. I don't know how they'd get out if they did that. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of hold that one. Is that parallel or is it when we angle parking? Just parallel, I guess parallel. But in front of the building, we, we need to we need to go ahead and research that. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday, I'll be in Salina. I'll be out of town. I'll be in Salina for retirement. Um, and then I had a just for a, a really quick executive session. But I think I'm gonna let Carl go first. In that way, I'm not holding you up. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> Where's girl? How are we doing? There you go. That's what I proposed on the budget. Uh, one hundred thirty-seven thousand seven hundred. I put that from last year. I tried to wheel it back down. Um, one thing that I was going to try to do on the second page is the appraisal equipment reserve where we built that. You know, that was for we use that a lot for the GIS, the GIS uh, uh, maintenance and updates and so forth like that. Um, on the third page, uh, and this is how I want to try to do this. I have a long ways to work on getting a new copier. Uh, what we did back this is back in 2005. Uh, we bought this printer, and uh, but we went with the three counties, and the three counties <coughs> bought the same printer, and we got a huge discount. Discount, and so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find out if we can do this with the three counties again, because the printer's getting they're getting it's 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 doing okay, but the maintenance I don't want to get too high. I don't want to pay three hundred dollar maintenance every month on them because the copiers getting over. How that works with us is. We pay the maintenance by how many copies we make copies of, and then all the all the maintenance is free then, the toners and everything. So that's actually for us, it's a cheaper way to do it, uh, and I think it's worked out really well. Um, so I wanted to put this in here. I, I think we have enough money in Stafford County to use the equipment reserve, and not put that copier in our budget in my budget. <coughs> Is how I'd like to do it here, but before I make a decision or, or, or do this, I want to through. I want to get the other two counties on board and get that additional uh, discount because it did make a big difference. They last all time. Up the, that's the same word, Tara. All of them, yeah, about the same time, so they're all real close. Get the uh, be. And so, um, so that's I just want to let you know I'm, that's what I'm working on. I didn't put that in the budget for the summer because I attached the the appraisal equipment reserve so you can see where, where we could get the money to, to pay for that then. But just kind of let you know I'm at, that's kind of what I'm working on anyway. Um, so, I think, so you're able to have a reserve fund. I'm confused by this. This was put back um, since we got the GIS um, because of the photography because of the, the maintenance and the, and the professional help that we need sometimes. This is typically what we put back for this, this what we used for this here. 
uh, the DLT solution, the solutions, the auto desk, you pay out of here, our, our subscription and so forth. Um, the last bill that you've probably seen was Lowell Lamar, where he came down and helped with uh, when we got the photography from um, the Sheriff's Department. He came in from Swine and helped do some, some work on it and so forth. And we paid him out of that reserve and so forth like that. You don't see it very often when we use it, but, but that's typically what it's for. Steve, you're aware of the GIS system. Mm -hmm. He comes up. We we work. Yeah. We've been working together on, on a couple projects, a couple things. Yeah. Is that? You know, I was telling. I was talking to Carl after going to the meeting in Wichita, and uh, they devoted I don't know how many hours to GIS and mm -hmm. how it can be utilized. And you know, one of the things was uh, fire ponds in the county and. Our, you know, one of our biggest hurdles is, uh, I, I, mean, I don't want to criticize, I guess I am a little bit, but, but the dispatch system has got to embrace that just a wee bit more to, for us to, to and, and I know it's, it's huge changes for them, but it's, it's paramount that you know, we, we can't use it if, because, you know, we're not going to put mobile terminals in our trucks, it's just not feasible, we have so many trucks. And, so we really rely upon our dispatch center to to pull that information up, and that's that's our link to all everything Carl has. And if you know, and I'm I'm making strides there, but it's it, it's it's tough. It's tough because it's a change. It's well, a change from going hard I, copy and hard yeah. hard maps to electronic. And I I, I think I've got a, a plan. I kind of backed up. I was going pretty fast and trying to get them to change and, and now you know I'm kind of backing up and taking a little slower approach and I think I'm going to have a little bit better luck. Well obviously I was very impressed about the GIS system you know and Carl I've discussed this and you know and it's like there's nine departments in the county that can utilize this thing and we'll see right now we're doing the we're saving the city of St. John and the city of Stafford money on their zoning yes. and we're doing the zoning map for each city, so particularly um, uh, Boston, they don't they don't make their zoning maps. We're making for each city, and then when they get their zones, we're make a layer for each zone for each city to try to save them because we have. It. So that's so what we, that was the intent of you know when we got the GIS right. is the more people that used it, the better off it was going to be. You know. You know, you can make, you can make any uh, infinity amount of layers. I mean, you, anywhere from, you know, we talked about it a while back, about, you know, the bridges in the county. You know, if you don't take a photo of the bridge, we can make a, photo, uh, a layer of bridges and locations, their, their serial number or their bridge number, and put that all in there. But that's, you know, I can't do that. Right. Until so we I get the information. It's kind of what we're talking about. We need information, and then we can... <clears throat> make layers, uh, but you, you know it's, you can do anything with it. Uh, manholes. I mean, in the cities, they some cities do that. Some cities even go to the point of uh, where you have a lot of light poles. They, they make a, a layer for that. That's because nice. what it is is, is, is it when is. there's a, a disaster, that stuff's gone, and nobody knew where nothing was. You know. So that's why some of these cities have layers of what sounds ridiculous sometimes <laughs> when it's gone and you look at the pictures of Joplin and so forth, oh, yeah. you wouldn't know where nothing was. Yeah, that's true. And so when you flip that layer on, you give it to the emergency people, they know exactly where things were at. Because the exa example they gave was Dickinson County at the Chapman tornado. Mm -hmm. And the lady who was in the charge of the GIS started making copies and you know and there was no duplication well I already you know the next meeting in a couple hours said well I checked blocks said well I already did that and it mm -hmm. eliminates because she ran copies and said okay here you have this and this and that. one of the first computers they grabbed out of the at, in Greensburg was out of the appraiser's office had the GIS on it. And, and they took it to a mobile site and, and brought it back out there and they started making maps. 
kind of thing. So, so yeah, that's kind of what we talked about a long time ago. Was you know, the more people that can use it, the more. But it, it, it takes work on the other. Whoever's going to use it, it takes work on their end because they got to they have to gather the information. Yeah. And that's sometimes where we. But we are making progress in that regard. We're doing I hope better. Did, Carl, do we have any? Do we have any site locators? I mean, do we have? Any? No, we don't. I mean, that'd be something that we that we could mm -hmm. use. I mean, it, it's like you can. Well, anything you want to go out there, you just it, it it'll it'll like connect with, with like multiple satellites, and then it, then you just pin it. We did all the fire hydrants. We did. So you, you, know, you print a map, and that's exact, you know. And I, I, I just for example of, of embracing it, you know, the folks in Leavenworth, you know, the old firefighters, and ah, oh, that fire hydrant isn't there. I said, it's there. I stood right over the top of it and pinned it. <laughs> it doesn't. The GIS doesn't lie. It, 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 it's there. Instead of penciling it in, you're standing there, and you're just going to pencil it in the map. This, this actually, mm -hmm. this is real life. You stand right off top of it and put your locator and. Uh, I'm not sure how, how much those cost. How much? Um, Pony got two of them through uh, uh, the Homeland Security. I'm not sure how they did that. We'll look into maybe security <clears throat> grant, one of those. But that way you're actually located. And, but otherwise you're, you're doing, you can still put it on the mapping system, but, but you've done it. Not, uh, mm -hmm. It's not true to life. It's just you're ballparking it. Really. So, okay. But anyway, on the budget, that's what, if you have any questions on there. Um, How come you added $500 for fuel when you had none before? Because actually I thought I thought I had it on there because we paid the road bridge. I don't know if we just didn't show a line item there, but, uh, but we pay them at the end of every year, and that's about what it is. I tried to cut on the, the telephone. Uh, I didn't know about for sure about the, in the uh, insurance. A um, couple of classes, uh, pro services. Um, since '92, I mean, I, it's, uh, and, and the Orion expenditures, as you see, I put $300 in there. It's under the capital outlay. Um, last year, we paid some of that out of our reserve. What that is is they want each county to pay for per parcel enhancements is how they want to do that. And last year I think we paid $130 or something that makes it for uh, enhancements for the new Orion system. And I think that's how they're going to stick on doing this is, is each county is going to pay per parcel. So the bigger counties will pay because they're usually the ones that need the uh, enhancements before we do. And that's why they came up with the first parcel amount. <clears throat> but your your copier is not in this budget. No, okay. no. But you have a reserve fund to buy. That's right. Yeah. So I try to keep it whittled down. I have since the get go. Appreciate. It. And then what we'll do is whenever this plan here, then this budget goes into the uh, with my appraisal maintenance that you guys sign every year, and then this I have to send a copy of this to the state there so they can see what our budget's been doing every year. And one other thing, real quick, we're going to start our 17 percent. Um, going out and doing the data collection again. Just so you guys kind of know, we'll be in Rose Valley Township, York Township, St. John Township, and then the south part of St. John City. And, and so that's the 17% that we'll go out and relook really at and collect photos and <coughs> data and information on that there. So that's where we will be. All right. Here's, last Here's something that we're, that we're doing in Maryland that's actually done all this work. So we divide it into, into different zones, and eventually we can put that in into the CAD system. <coughs> so 
If the call was right here, it'd be zone 101. Instead of saying you so drive a mile. five miles this way and four miles that way and three miles that way, it'd be just zone 101. It's pretty easy, the system came in. It's pretty simple. I mean, on, you know, how you would narrow it down, just you'd be within a mile, <coughs> just like that. Okay, right. So, so if you were right here, yep. where would you be? Well, I mean, yeah. you'd, you'd probably just put it over here. You know, you'd address. So you'd address, and that's how you put the catch it, is, is you, you put all your addresses that are on this side of the road in here. So it'd be 1697. <coughs> and actually, that's not a nine, is it? Mm -hmm. Well, you got it. It is a nine. That's a 97. Area. Yep. Okay. So it'd be 1697. Zone 1697, that gets you in the section. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just like that. That's, oh, that's, that's pretty nice. That is mm -hmm. not bad at all. Instead of worrying about the northwest, <coughs> or the yeah. each, each yeah. section is numbered. Yeah, and in the zone. What we is what you're saying, right? Yes, yes. And then what we've done is we've we've, we've identified, I've, I've coupled one of the bigger departments up with each with each little department, so you have more likelihood of having having yeah. response. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and the, so we we couple at least two truck responses. For each one of them, but you know the, the problem with with going by directions is the dispatcher's given directions for for three different uh, people coming from three different locations. Right. And I think it's a great. Really? You know, I, I don't know how many times when I first got here because I don't know the county at all. And well, yeah. they say, "Well, come this many miles north of the church." Really? I said, "I'm not coming that direction. Right. right. I'm coming from completely up north." I, if you want me to drive clean past it, five miles in the church. Come back. <laughs> I can find the church, but and so, and it, but this isn't implemented yet. This is what we're working towards. Is that so we're working towards. And initially, what and I said I kind of backed up. Initially, I wanted to put wanted them to put this into the CAD system. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they put all these addresses in, and then when they put the address in, when they're taking the call, and they're and they're entering it into the computer. Boom! It says fourteen fifty four, mm -hmm. but that kind of put them into into shock, and I've seen a lot of resistance. And so I said, "Well, let's back up. I said, let's do it manually for a while." And so right now, when we, when we finally get this implemented, we'll. Uh, and what I did is I, Maryland's done a lot of work because initially I had, I think I had nine, and I had the bigger, and. Um, but when I showed it to everybody, some of the responders, the emergency folks said, well, we'd really like to, to cut it off here, too, on K-19, because that's a good north-south benchmark. And I didn't have a cutoff here on 281, and they thought, 281 would be a good, or 50. They said 50 would be a good benchmark of, you know, if it's north, we know it's in 10, if it's south, it's 14. And so then I went back and said, Maryland, and that. Change that and just add a few more zones. And then we're going to color wise, we're going to kind of try to define it just a little bit more. So it's, and these numbers will be made bigger. These, this will be the size of the truck that goes in, I mean, the size of the map that goes in the trucks themselves. And then they'll have a, a bigger map that uh, that'll be on the wall in dispatch center and, and in the walls of the station. Sounds good to me. But like Carl said, this is a layer. Descriptions is really hard. Mm -hmm. It's just very good. And, and it's and the same like for everybody if you give it that come, way. Come come from different directions, even harder. Yes. Yeah. citizen from Hudson area, been a week or two now, and this man would like to nominate you for president, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, he was uh, very happy with the service you guys provided, well, and, good. and you in particular, and I wanted you to be aware of that. Well, I appreciate it. He, uh, 
he thought we should give you some kind of an award or medal or something. And I guess this is as close as you're going to get. To <laughs> well, I appreciate that. But, but a public thank you and uh, job well done. Well, I've enjoyed it, and, and we got a lot of good people. We really do. Well, yeah, and I don't know who was with you that day, but uh, he said the both of you basically credits you for saving his son's life. And, uh, I, I think another gentleman that you were talking about, he I, was very I, sick. Yeah, he was very sick. I think the doctor said that the door was open and he had a foot through it. That's, that's the, I didn't, don't know the details, but the harrowing part of the story I listened to, that was enough. It was, so anyhow, job well I appreciate done. that. Uh, if I could have an executive session for probably just eight minutes. Eight. 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 Ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> I don't want to make the bill wait too long. I didn't want to say five. I didn't want to say ten. What the so he made the whiff please. Four. Uh, it's just about not elected personnel. I beg to differ with the expectation for not elected personnel for ten minutes. Ten minutes. I want to fill it. Wait too long. Ten with four H kids go to camp. So. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, the phone guy, uh, Chuck, is here. And he said he can run the line from here over there. I asked him what's cost, and he goes, we're not going to worry about that yet. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. So if some of you operate that way. Uh, that's, what I, that's why I came up here, because he's downstairs now looking things over. And he also didn't know what you're going to do with, like, Steve and, uh, and Carolyn's offices. He's, he's going to be here a while. Uh, yeah, you want me to go tell him to stop? Just, until, just like, say tell he was, that. Hang around until we get done. We'll okay, because that's when he made that comment. I go, well, we need to know what it's going to cost right. to see if it's going to compare to the other things. And he goes, well, I'm not going to worry about that. But he goes, we can get you hooked up today. Okay. So I can't imagine being no, too expensive, but well, it'll be hopefully less than what the phones cost. Yeah, because I did. I did tell Clayton. I don't know if Clayton told you we priced Golden Belt phones, and they were nineteen hundred ninety-two dollars for a phone system, and the phone system. From CenturyLink, um, when I talked to Clayton, he thought that was too high. It was going to be thirty-five hundred dollars for CenturyLink. So, but the guy from CenturyLink did tell me we could buy, go to Walmart, buy two-line phones and put in there. But you can't transfer them, you yeah. can't intercom and that kind of thing. So, okay. I'll go tell Chuck to hang off. around. Okay, thank uh, you. Very and much. and we'll be over in okay 20, 30 minutes. Okay, well we'll okay. be gone by then. But I'll tell him. Thanks. Less of a problem to remodel. The problem is it's just becoming a, an absolutely a nightmare. I don't understand why that's even hard. <coughs> it, it will be resolved. <laughs> we did get the parking lot back there. Yes, I care did. Of, I, we, I think we found every dead line in there that there could possibly be behind that building. I've seen. We found the sewer line. We found uh, um, two old dead phone lines, and we found a dead man back there. A dead man. Dead man. Uh, a person? Anchor. No. Oh, dead man. <laughs> <laughs> and we even found no gas line. I drive by the next day and I'll see all the stuff over there. all this stuff later. I um, leave, hope I leave and they call me back. I hope everything still works Can you come back? <laughs> Thank goodness everything it was dead, but it was it was quite a soft spot back in there. So we had to put quite a bit of rock to, to, to get it to Nothing's ever easy, is it? No, yeah, it's going to be nice. I was going to really say that. I mean, we've got a little bit of passion to do, but there's a couple of spots. But, and then I'll go ahead and get some bumpers ordered. You see them? No, I didn't. Angle. I didn't go back. Yeah. And then, yeah, we can either, you can either angle park or cut down on the dirt. Do that. Okay. I rewrote some job descriptions. Those need to be. That, that would be a good thing. I'll make you copies. You want to look at them for a week? Yeah. And then I'll bring them up next week. Okay. <clears throat> um, the office down there. Are we going to move, or is the sheriff's office going to move, or what are they wanting to do? I mean, I don't know. I, thought, I asked them what they were wanting, and they didn't seem to know. 
what they wanted. I think that's a really good question that I'd like to answer before I have to make any decisions. Well, I mean, I, I hate to move and that it not be necessary if they're just going to use it for a conference room or something like that. Do they have a plan? The sheriff's office, do they well, have a plan? I thought the whole thing was the idea they need more space in there. Well, that's, so that's, that was, the sheriff, that was the sheriff's office that they're starting with. And if they want more space, that was to utilize more space and then move the road and bridge and the, and the weed part down. And then originally they got our office and the noxious weed office, so they took two and we went into one. Yeah. I'm just confused. But I, I thought they were looking at it because of like they had the Because, I mean, right now, I mean, unless it's going to happen real quick, and I can't see that happening. Probably not in the hurry. Extension's not even out. Not, not yet. So yeah. Well, and, I mean. And they won't be for a month or so. That's what I was told. It's a busy time. It is a busy they time. They don't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Are you anxious to move? No. I like where I mean. I yeah, I'd like I'd like to know what the sheriff's office is. What, I mean, if what, what is, what is, what is it? What they talked about back then was the fact that they had they took it in. The booking room is in that little bit of closet, closet stuff like that, and then would expand out, and and that's why we thought initially about them over there, but the cost was. Prohibiting right, right. 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 I think it's a good idea. I just wonder if they had a plan or well, kind of a structured plan or ideas that they wanted to do. <laughs> My thoughts would be to scoot you down to the corner where extension is because there's some, some fake walls there. Well, and, as, and, I, and I was talking with Ron the other day and he said, well, you know, if you interest in privacy, that you, you, know, you would have to have some walls or something built, not have either. Why does he have privacy where he's at? Well, you do have some walls. I don't know. I don't put yeah. the <coughs> business down there. You're just an open door. <laughs> just an open door, one way or the other. I'm just a doormat. <laughs> well, you know, until they get their stuff cleaned out and you can get a clear idea of what there's available, I don't too excited. Okay. Well, I'll leave the we'll just wait and see. Are, are we, are we, is Steve's going to move out of this little conference He's room? Moving, over. moving over to the to <laughs> annex, right? Yes. So are that little conference room, is that going to be back into a conference type room? Yes. That's yeah. what we're trying to do there. All right. Well, okay. But always, always was with you have. See, because that's that's where they talked about the enemy place to interview anybody, being that that guy took over. Yeah, we always and right. so we now, 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 now that they have that, you know, that's a handy. So we had different things. It's there, nice too. to have just that little, little conference. I agree. Yeah. Uh, it is nice. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I was hoping we were going to do. Yeah. Right. We'll get it back. And so and so then where the extension people are is where. Road and bridges and, and, and Noxious Week. Noxious Week go down there. That, that leads us all the other way for sheriff. Okay. And that's what the sheriff wants too, but they just don't really have an idea what they're going to do with it. But that's not going to stop us from moving. Okay. I guess you know as much as I do then. Didn't well, very much. If he's wanting you know, a conference room or something like that, I mean. Yeah, he could go to the other end of the hall, but it wouldn't make any difference. Right. You mean Jeff? Yeah. Can I entertain some questions? Are you, is there any, any discussion of a, a place for a state trooper? That's what they said to get a state trooper. They, have, they have office space for it now. Yeah, do they have office space? Yeah, if they get one. They're getting one. 
supposed yeah. to be coming. Someone out. called the me last week interested in locating the nurseries. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's part of the reason that will doing this. Space Air Force State probably is to provide them. Actually, I guess we had to take a trip and a case of that person at one time. That was terrible. So it's over, it's, it'll be over in the sheriff's office. Area. All in one, all in one area down there. I think you keep all together that it needs. So this one will back up. I'm sure he'll be down for a second. Oh no! I think it's right out. I don't know what you're gonna watch. Another young enthusiastic one. Boy, they're my favorite. I already told my dad to slow down there. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's from the West. He's from around Spearville area. I believe he has some relation. Oh, really? Well, I'm just going to say that Legislation kind of has two parts to it. One is people moving into this county from out of state um, are exempt from Kansas income tax for five years. We don't have to do anything um, as the county. Anyone that, that moves here is eligible for that. There's a second provision that um, in the final version of the legislation, it requires the um, county to opt in for this portion and it will give. Um, allow for student loan repayment, um, $1,500 from the state, $1,500 from the county. But the county has to opt in for even the state portion to kick in because that ended mm -hmm. up being passed. Um, you can do it a couple different ways. You can, you know, just, you can designate like a certain number if you want to in a, in a, in a given year. You could say, um, we authorize 10, 10 you know, you know your, your liability is 15000 or whatever for you know, now. We've got, we've got room in our 2011 budget to do that out of economic development, but because the fiscal year for the county and the state are different, it really needs to fall into 2012's budget for the county because it's at, you know, it'll be state fiscal year begins here in July counties doesn't until January so that's where I'd like to have a discussion with Amber about what options we would have she's kind of said there's a couple of options pros and cons with them we could um, set up one is um, nonprofit entity that we the county would designate um, funds into and then we would have no constriction on which would also, it would, it would eliminate the constrictions of, of the dates of fiscal years, but it also might make us eligible for certain grants that um, currently we wouldn't be able to administer very well through the county. For example, revolving loans are pretty common for economic development entities, and administering a revolving loan program through the county system may present challenges, so there'd be some benefits that way. Anyway, um, on the 27th, I'm um, just going to deliver the, uh, the, the report. I could arrange to have some economic development board members here as well 
we can talk through some of those those options. Um, you're open to that. They need to. You need to decide if you're going to do that student loan thing first. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to. Still be in the rural opportunity zone. Right. Right. So that's. I think it's kind thing. of interconnected. Do you though. want to designate tax dollars to do this? Well, what you're saying is maybe we can do it without designating tax dollars if there are options available. No, that, no, you still have those tax I dollars. Mean, I, mean, I mean, well, technically, if we had a, you know, a community foundation or something like that that had funds in it available to do something like you could, I mean, it doesn't have to come from the county, but realistically <coughs> speaking, in our situation, I think that's really the, I don't, I don't know of any other if we go source this, that we realistically we, have but I'm saying that we have plenty of authority in in the economic development budget in 2011 to be able to pay for you know if we wanted to say 10 or 15 for that. Uh, it's not a 2011 expense but that's where I'm saying that setting up this and you know the, the structural side of things there are some options on in, in amber committee um, well you may have it the reason you have it in 2011 let's say you could do the structural part is because of these uh, grants that we received right the money from farm bureau and that other grant mm -hmm. no it's just the what county budget, budget tax dollars budgeted but you she hasn't gotten any of the grant dollars yet but your but your budget in the future do you think that your budget in the future is going to be enough that you can afford to do this without these grant monies or anything like that? I mean, I know your, yeah. your budget is not that big. I'm wondering where all right. this money's right. coming from in your no, budget. No, I think it, I think so. But especially um, if we considered setting it up so that we designated, say, say we took authority for 10, um, 15,000, and and um, put it in the nonprofit entity, it could carry over for, you know, the, for two years. If we didn't, if we only had five people come next year, we could carry that over into the next, we wouldn't have the same. But at the end of the year, what your budget is now, anything you left over goes back in general fund, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can't, you, you can't have a reserve, can they? They, they, like some of these others talked about where they can't they can't transfer the money, that extra money into reserve. So that's what you use, what you've got, and that's the end of the year. That's my and How come is that one? There's no statutory authority for county general to designate a reserve fund. Like the appraiser, there's a specific statute that says he can have. So there's no, no statute that says they can do this on these. Mm -hmm. I thought it's strange or not that because it using the money to go back that's into why it's a fund, and that way you'd have access to drop down. That's how you get your cash results. You have to have statutory authority to set up a reserve fund. Where does that come from, that authority? But the camp, for example, the hospital operates with both. As from my discussions with Amber, they both have their own fund, so then they're not operating under the general. We don't have much to do with the hospitals. And they have a non profit status so she had suggested those are a couple of the options yeah. we could look at setting it aside as a separate fund not operating out of the general and then the nonprofit entity and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. well that's beyond me I don't well that's why I think you know, it might be useful to have an authority discuss with you. Well, let me ask you this. Do you, you, you truly believe that this program has merit, that it's something that we should spend tax, tax dollars on? Well, I have one person that has called me last week that is actively interested in locating in Stafford County specifically because of this. He read about it in the newspaper. He can locate anywhere in the southwest Kansas region. He is living in Wichita now with his wife, um, who's just graduated with a master's degree. Um, originally from Dodge City, would like to get closer to home. Stafford County gets them closer to home, and specifically, this program is making them interested in this. I mean, where I thought <laughs> from the beginning that it would really be more the income tax provision that was fine. You know, our first bite is on the the student loan. Are they going to stay longer than five years? 
He will. He will live here. He will live here just long enough well, to get well, well, he paid off, and then move on. He, well, it's three thousand dollars a year, right? It's fifteen thousand max. Right, half from the state. So half, half from the So that's three thousand from the county and three thousand. I mean, uh, fifteen hundred from the Fifteen. Yeah. If we opt in, is this how long are we committed to this? If we opt in and say, "Hey, this is cost us," can we get out? What you know? Yeah, we're either yeah. in or out. Right? Is there, is there, is there uh, you have to you have to appropriate each. I mean, I don't think you obligate yourself to an appropriation beyond the current year. Um, but you do have to. If you want to participate, you do have to make that choice before. December 31st this year. So we have yeah. to, if we're, say we're going to go in this, it's got to, some money comes out here and we're going to pay off our student loans and we go one year and say, no, we changed our mind. That's what I'm asking. It's probably That's, tacky, but I don't think yeah, anything. I, mean, we, you you can't I thought you had to sign up for the whole, either all in or all yeah. out. Well, in Basically, the state of Kansas, technically, their appropriations are year by year. So even the state's portion of it, you can't all So the state can change their mind. They can change their year. mind if they wanted to. But you know you can you can cap you can cap your expenditure by specifying how much you want to designate. You know, it's not an open ended. Um, so we could say three thousand dollars if we wanted, or forty five hundred, or something like that. Every year. Right. And so that would allow forty five would allow three people to come. In. That's good. People to kind of get student loans are paying on too. <laughs> yeah, it's really, that's, that's, from that's this from this side of the something. desk. It's a real. It's, it's, it's a nice idea, but it's, 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 it's asking the county, the taxpayers in the county, to support somebody that who doesn't live here and give them a break to move here. And it's tough to do that. You know, to use tax dollar to money, local tax money to do that, is, doesn't seem fair. I guess is the way to put it. But the idea, on the other hand, if it works. To be a real asset to the family. It's, I know. It, I mean, it's so your recommendation is what? I think we need to at least investigate um, the options for setting this up that would allow us to use, um, you know, this year's budget authority. Mm -hmm. We might not have to come back and look and ask you next year who would have it taken care of out of what we've got available in this year. Well, so you wanted to investigate the possibility that we could even do this because there's some disagreement on whether it's even legal. Or well, it's, it's 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 legal. It's a matter okay. of whether you you think you know it's your policy decision to um, to go that route. Um, you know. Now, when do we have to decide this? <coughs> well, this January. Part, yeah, January. Well, that part I understand, but you've got a person. Uh, we've got some, yeah, and the, the program begins in terms of, you know, um, the, the state authority begins Jul or July, one. July 1. So they must move to the ROZ county after July 1, the day the law goes into effect. Second, you must move after the ROZ county opts in to the student loan repayment plan. Counties will have up until January 1 of 2012 to opt in. Um, Repayments may be made annually, usually at the end of the calendar year. The earliest repayment would occur at the end of 2012. The repayments may directly to the lender. Let me ask you this. If you have, let's say we budget for three people and we have six apply, how do we determine which three get it? It's first come, first serve. Who determines it? I wouldn't know how else to do it other than first come, first serve. You don't know until the end of the year how many you're ultimately going to have, right? Yeah. So. Okay. So Amber is going to be here the 27th. They're going to bring it Well, I'm not opposed to exploring it and discussing it more. I'm, personally, I don't know. I have obviously reservations.
going to take tax dollars, then it has to be budgeted. If I don't know how you get the Kansas statute to change where you could have monies left over from your your fund to be put into a, to a separate account, I don't know. Um, that literally takes an act of Congress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, legislation. Yeah. Well, the only thing I have problems with is it's, it's tax dollars money. And although it is a small amount, I mean, if you have one individual, that's $1,500 a year for the next five years, right? Right. And the, and the state kicks in. My only concern is what if the state decides, oh, we can't do this next year. If the state doesn't do it, you don't have to do it. Really? That's what I understand. Okay. But let's talk to Amber and see what... I'm not opposed, I'm not opposed to talking. That's, that's and Maybe, uh, you know, obviously Kingman County has bought into it because I noticed there are ads on TV now. Mm -hmm. But what about Kiowa and what are there, there's 50 counties? What Pratt and Pawnee is going to do? Someone close by. What do you think, Jay? I think just wait till we talk to her. Because I know my main concern yeah, is find out what's going on. Well, me too. Yeah, it's I just, just it's not one of those things that <clears throat> Big Brother is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like the penal system. I mean, they, they can't afford to put prisoners in their state prison, so they bounce it back to the county. So it's the county's problem. On the other hand, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here because this isn't necessarily my point of view, but if you can get two or three good families to move here and raise their children here and go to school there, what's that worth to, to the county spent. and the taxpayers and the school systems? I mean, my goodness, it's you know quite a return on your investment, potentially. It's just doesn't feel like my job. To do this it really doesn't, but I'm willing to listen to the ideas. So, because we had we've had a discussion about this at the economic development board level too. Yeah, well, how, what, what kind of feedback did they give you? I think they saw some advantages to um, to having a nonprofit entity to operate out of um, where it. Where, where it is, I don't know, provides the benefit of being able to respond in a way that the county system doesn't as well. The revolving loans is that the other example outside of this immediate example. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's lots of examples of other economic development entities around the state that do operate that way. We need, need to gather those examples. As, aside from this particular issue. Right. Okay, I think uh, I understand what you're saying. I mean, the, I think it's probably actually more common. I think there's both. There's both. There's economic development entities that operate under the county umbrella, and there's ones that operate outside um, as a as a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. and, but I think it's probably more common under the nonprofit. But either one, and and there's no reason that we can't have both operating at the same time. Right? You know, we could have a nonprofit entity that can fund particular things that are and still operate fundamentally out of the out of the county. You mean the money but streamed into this entity out there and, and not not mingle with the counties. Right. And then you just find somebody 
that uh, qualifies for the, you could, you could get the money out of that fund and, and not actually basically involve the county at all. Right. Well, that sounds interesting. Well, I but really think it's up to the board to make those decisions. I mean, I really, no, I this whole concept is... Um, well, up to the board, but what, uh, within the range of what the they could do, what they, what they actually have the authority to do. It's that's like, it'd be thing. useful for the, the discussion yeah. to occur so with all I, of you. you know, so, we can't it's really, they don't have authority that you don't give them right now. So, right. Um, I mean, they have the... They have the authority to spend your budget, but... Only as you give them. I mean, technically, you really do have the, fund, the, the un, you know, the... Well, that's our responsibility for the right. so taxpayers. I'm, well, I mean, for example, and we can talk about this since you've got it written, but, you know, getting your office set up and, and your office equipment and stuff. Okay. I've seen like this. Do, do you and does your board have the authority to make these decisions without asking this? You know, my opinion is yes, they do. But on the other hand, we also have a county policy where anything over five hundred dollars comes before us. But it's not necessarily an approval process so much as it is an awareness process and due diligence. That's the way I understand it. Am I correct? So like on her office and her office furniture, it's between her and her board, is that not correct? It's correct. But isn't that kind of a gentleman's agreement? I think technically speaking, they don't really have any written authority, right? Well, it's not a gentleman's agreement because every office has that basic authority. Neil wanted a new desk. She she got it within her, within her a power, her authority to do that. You see. But as far as the board goes, right? Well, it seems like this is like a hospital board. I mean, they make the decisions and... But there's where I'm going with this idea of, a, of, of, uh, of the structure that truly gives them that authority. You know, I mean, there is a, there is a difference in the way that the hospital... It's different is structured it's true it is versus this so the, the, that's what the, the I'm saying we, and this may be kind of an evolutionary process too well, that we need to go through in a very transparent way that everybody you know and that's why i think that maybe having amber well who's the better authority on this the difference between nita for example and you is that you have a board that you need to communicate with she does not uh and your board has some, I thought they had some budget authority. I mean, they, they, that's what gives them some power, is that they can, if you sit there and say, I want to do this, and they say, no, I think you have a problem. Well, I would never do that, just because. Right, I understand I, that, but. It, it, but my, it, my just judgment would, but I think in a very, in a, in a kind of a structural way, mm -hmm. Their authority is more of a gentleman's agreement with you as the commissioners. It's not because they are the board of um, a. Yeah, a you know, it's bring together ideas of what they want to do and expenditures. And we got the yes, we're we're the ones that approve or disapprove the, the, the mouse, but bring together the ideas of what you want them to spend. That's part of the thoughts of the board. You make decisions how you want. I will spend it. And you come up here and we, you know, you'll list what you want to spend on and, and be it approved or disapproved. But we trust your judgment as to making, my view anyhow, making, you know, good decisions. Once they have to spend the money, and I don't think anyone ever want to just throw away the money. Right. So. And in fact, I, the reason that's part of what's brought me to bringing this up is the idea that. Having it, having, um, I think it could could be more physically conservative in the long run to be able to designate some money that we know we we we've got we've got budget. Um, it's within our budget in this year to do that. I mean, I have to come back next year and appropriate anything if 
be. But right now, everything has if, to go back to our club. Right. That's my understanding of it. <clears throat> that's the way it always has. That's the way it has to be. Because, like you said, it takes a state statute or something to change that. That's what I and then we can we, we find out from the auditor comes up or not right then, and then we'll know more about when the auditor comes up then. Okay, we'll wait and okay. discuss it some more. All right. Because we got to get it right. Because we can't do anything in the lake. This, this, yeah. Right. This is the company that I that started this whole clean line. That's the lady I talked to. Uh, as far as the Windmill people. And she's the one that gave me the name to call the brought in the clean line people okay. that started the whole thing. So she is the one that I think has expressed the most interest if you want to you know, continue discussing the possibility of small wind farms or what, any of that stuff. I, I give her a call. Okay. And because she's the one that kind of got the whole ball rolling and they're located in um, yeah, so. yeah. Okay. You know what? We, yeah, we, have we have called each other, but I can't remember if we've actually connected. So, I'll call again. Yeah, yeah. I think if you talk to her and tell her as far as what's happened with the power line and how frustrating it is for us and the communication we've had with Midwest Energy okay. and some of the ideas we've presented, maybe she'll have some ideas too. Because she's the one that explained to me about the little window they had at, at Spearville and how now that has turned into an explosion. Okay. And uh, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. We got to thank you know the family of Teresa one group. And oh yeah, I better. Uh, I'll think about it. I've had a letter of resignation to Paula Rickson from the hospital board and so we'll need to place her and we thank her for her years of service. Is it immediately? Or Effective immediately? Uh, immediately, that's it. That's too bad. Yes, it is. Salary increase for Steve Moody. From range 17 Step 2B to range 17, step 3C. Say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Aye. So, do we have anything else this morning? Not aye. All right. We're adjourned.